Hello, my name's Mary, and this is Totally Shui, a podcast about the DCAU, and whatever the hell else I want to talk about. I'm also here. My name's Luke. <laughs> Nearly forgot about you. Yeah. Well, I mean, it's hard to. I take up so much space. Oh, that's not true. We have been spending a lot of time at our desk together. I've been playing The Sims, and you've been doing actual work. Yeah. Yeah. But let's let's get into today's episode. Yeah. So I would like to ask you one question, and I know the answer to this, and that's why I'm going to start with this. Do you have any news for us today? I do have some news, actually. So first thing, this week at the time of recording is actually the one year anniversary of Totally Shui. Yeah. So Totally Shui is one year <laughs> old. Hooray. Woo. Woo. I'll clap as well. Yeah. Yeah. So thanks, everyone, that's been joining us and listening to this. I'm often surprised by how many uh, people listen to this, especially considering it's only available on YouTube and it's not like the most intuitive way to listen to podcasts. So, you know... That's wonderful stuff. Thank you, Thank everyone. Thank you. Um, this podcast brings me a lot of joy because I might seem like I would be a people person, and a lot of people think that, but I am an introvert that loves to just connect online and really... In person, I am so awkward. I either talk too much because I'm really anxious or I just want to go home. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I just want to go home. Um, I'm starting to think I'm an introvert as well. <laughs> uh. So having you, like you all, here to talk to and to actually like reply to some of the things that we say is, is so awesome. And I think I've met some genuine friends here. If I've talked to you more than three times <laughs> or mentioned you more than three times this year, that's more than I've, I've I've spoken to some people in my like day to day life. So yeah, and um, the people that comment on on all of our episodes or most of our episodes. Yeah, they don't even have to comment every yeah, week. Yeah, that's the thing. Like, regular names popping up. It's very nice to see. We we see that, and we actually talk about it like in our in our day to day life. Like, oh hey, what's what's Screen Wiper doing? What's what's Big Mikey P doing? Yeah, what obscure reference is Big Mikey P going to make yeah. that I won't be able to pronounce? <laughs> and I'll be like, I could pronounce it for you, kind of. After, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> after I do a quick Google search, um, Captain Alses. Yeah, Captain Al. Haven't heard from him in a while. Captain yeah. Al, hope you're fine. Yeah. But so many of y'all, I could name everybody if I wanted to, but at the moment, I just want to get to some news because I get embarrassed sometimes when I talk well, about Well, all right, myself. let's go to the next news piece. All right. So I think everyone that listens to this will probably already be aware, but Crisis on Infinite Earths Part 3 came out uh, recently. And it features Kevin Conroy's final performance as Batman. And it was very touching. So Batman's on the rooftop, uh, you know, like the BTS title sequence. The Joker comes up behind him. They get into a fight and a scuffle. And the Joker says that he's very touched by the fact that Batman wants to spend his last night on Earth as the universe is ending with him. And they look around and you can see the blue wave from the, um, the cosmic destruction coming towards them. And Batman says, I care. I care about Gotham. I care about justice. <laughs> Stop it. <laughs> he said, Stop and if it has it. to end, at least I end it being Batman. And he punches the Joker in the face. His final act in the universe, yeah. punching the Joker in the face. It was perfect. It was wonderful. It's truly beautiful. Wasn't very long. Like I, I, I've said all along that I didn't think he'd have a significant role. Um, there were other DCAU characters in there. You get a glimpse of what's happening on the Justice League Watchtower. Oh. Aquaman was up there for some reason. The Joker. Oh. I'll get to this in a moment. I want to talk about the positive stuff. So positive stuff. So you, you see Shaira and uh, John Stewart with his original look from this show, while mm -hmm. Shaira is wearing her Kill Bill style yeah. two piece outfit. Um, they can see the destruct the wave of destruction coming towards them, and they embrace and kiss as the Watchtower is wiped out of existence. It's very very touching, very nice. The way, it, the way it should have been the whole time. Yes. Not I, the destruction, but the, the kissing. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but, you know, there'll be people that go, it's not canon because Batman's wearing his BTAS costume and Green Lantern's in his Green Lantern, the anim um, not Green Lantern, the animated too, excuse me. He's in his uh, Justice League outfit and Hawkgirl's in her Justice League Unlimited outfit. It doesn't work. Do you know what? It doesn't matter. Who it cares? It doesn't matter. It's beautiful. 
The only point of contention is that the credits for the film credit Mark Hamill with the performance of the Joker. Mm -hmm. And it is very obviously not him. Very obviously not to anyone that is familiar with his voice. I don't know what's happened there. Um, It's not the first time that mistakes have appeared in Warner Brothers press releases or... Uh, credits for their movies. I believe the one of the Mortal Kombat movies had a number of errors in it that they ended up correcting later on. But I would say for all the people that go, oh, it's just Mark Hamill trying to sound young. No, it's not. I think the way you can prove this is by looking at Mark Hamill's social media. If this really were his final appearance with his dear friend Kevin Conroy, the man whose passing led to him deciding to stop playing the Joker unless Kevin was involved in the project in some way, which is how he's in multiverses. He has said nothing about this film as of the time of writing. That doesn't mean it's bad, but what it does mean, in my eyes anyway, that Mark was not involved with it. Here's what I have to say, and I've said Go it on. time and time again. Warner Brothers. Warner Brothers. I, I'm here. If you need somebody to look out for you, mm. to just be... Fact check. Well, not really that, because I I don't really want to do anything like that. I just want to be a part of something and get paid for it. Mary, are you telling me it was you that wrote the credits? You were like, yeah, that's Mark Hamill. He laughed. That's Mark Hamill. Tick him off. It was my done. That was my interview. (laughs) But hey, whatever. Ship it out. It's perfect. I'm here. I've got. I I know I have a job at the moment, but I've got free time. If you need to hire me, uh, we could talk. We could talk how much I'm worth. Um, it, that's fine, but yeah. Not to like, this is this may sound like humble brag, and it's it's absolutely not. So I was googling um, like answers to what was going on with this Mark Hamill. Um, oh, I know what you're going to mention. Thing. Yeah, and I came across. I don't use Reddit, by the way. I I don't. I just I don't know why I don't. I just don't. Um, but one I found a prominent uh, Reddit post in the DCAU subreddit where someone was saying, like, I'm not crazy, am I? But this definitely isn't Mark Hamill. And I was reading his post and he said, the only reason I'm saying this is because I've seen people arguing with Serum Lake. And I was like, how do they know who I am? (laughs) But yeah, it's nice to see that um, those people in the DCAU subreddit were like, pretty much all of them, apart from one, were in agreement with with that assessment. But anyway, I don't want to take the the shine off of crisis on infinite earth part three because that final scene with kevin was beautiful let's let's move on to yes. something else that's <clears throat> that's kind of a, a bit more cheery yeah, yeah okay well, we'll, we'll go on to something positive comic con so, yeah comic con's coming up Comic-Con. san diego comic con's coming up next weekend mm-hmm. um just ahead of it amazon has released a new poster for batman cape crusader that gives us a, a little peek at their penguin as well as the other villains. Um, That has literally just dropped at the time of recording, and I've already shared it on my community post, so hopefully you've all seen that already. Um, So there's some Comic-Con exclusives that I'm a bit pissed off about, okay? And I'm going to tell you why. Here's the reason why. I can't get them. (laughs) Because there's a tote bag, and then there's a few other things, but the tote bag is the one I like because it's got some of the characters from... Yeah, yeah. well, the only thing I don't like about it is it's got that character model of Mr. Freeze where he's laughing and pointing his gun in the air and shooting. Like, Mr. Freeze would never laugh. Even <laughs> Shut even, <up. laughs> even when he was freezing yeah. Ferris Boyle, he didn't laugh. Yeah. He kind of smirked, but he wouldn't like Is laugh. Is that really out loud. the thing on there? Because I didn't notice the mystery. Yeah. I was too yeah, busy yeah. looking at the other characters. Yeah, yeah. But Shut the th- front door. No, it's just from the early character designs, yeah. probably before Heart of Ice was written. But anyway, I digress. Carry on. It's a beautiful but, bag. But anyways, it's a beautiful bag. And if somebody puts it on eBay, I will probably end up purchasing it. If, if someone's going to San Diego Comic Con and wants to pick this stuff up and I'll send you some money for it, then hit us up you can find the email on my um on my channel if you click on like the the about channel stuff and you confirm you're a real person you can actually see my email address oh my god oh wow can i have it you know my email address is it no (laughs) (laughs) is it i love mary (laughs) that's my backup (laughs) 
<laughs> right, moving on, because we've spent 10 minutes yeah. talking about this already, so um, there will be lots of people that aren't interested in any of this. So mm-hmm. another cool Comic-Con exclusive is Todd McFarlane is reissuing the elderly Bruce Wayne figure from Batman Beyond with Ace, the dog. <gasps> two of them. We yeah, and it's them. a two-pack in an individual set. It was previously sold by DC Direct or DC Collectibles as part of a Batman Beyond three-pack with Batman, Bruce Wayne, and Ace. Uh, if you're there, then this is your chance to snag Bruce Wayne. I have a feeling he's going to re- re-release the the two pack at some point, and this is just going to mm. be a you know a special packaging version of it. Yeah. Um, so don't be too upset if you miss it. I keep telling myself that as I stare in the mirror and weep because <laughs> I can't go and get it. There's also some art from your buddy Kevin. Yes, Kevin Altieri has got a limited edition. Uh, I forget what they call it. They, they call it like a Mighty Mini or something like that. But basically it's like a canvas print of some of his artwork of Batman and Catwoman. I believe that there are only 50 editions of these being sold by Clampett Studios. So Clampett Studios are the main partner with Warner Brothers for selling their original art. So they sell a lot of the uh, animated series cells and production drawings. Um, so if you go into San Diego Comic Con, swing by their booth, have a look at uh, all of the original artwork they've got there, and you know if 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 the whim takes you, you can pick up one of um, Kevin Altieri's Batman and Catwoman drawings um, on a canvas print. So I think if anyone ever gets the chance, they should. Um, if, if I would, if I could, able to, because Kevin's art is just. I'm going to say this because I think it's a nice joke, but it's divine. I really, really, I, I love his style of artwork. Um, I don't know a ton of about art. I only know as much as I like. Mm-hmm. And I think that's what art's supposed to be. Yes, yeah, the, there's the famous saying, isn't there? I don't know anything about art, but I know what I like. Yeah. I can't remember who said that. I don't know either. I'm, I think I've actually butchered the famous saying, so mm. maybe it's not that can famous. Can we get to Martian Manhunter, please? <sighs> yes, we can. Okay, so I'm going to start this out with something I've written down in my notes. And it's one of the only notes that I've actually written down because I wanted it to come from the heart. Martian Manhunter is one of my favorite cartoon characters. Full stop. There's no, like, of this cartoon, mm-hmm. of of this, of this, of that. No, full stop. Because this character shows heart. It shows humanity, <laughs> despite being an alien. Um, <clears throat> and it also shows forgiveness. And sometimes that last one, that forgiveness one, it's really hard to learn and for this for that type of thing to be in justice league on cartoon network learning that really big lesson i think that was huge Mm. um and the thing that i've written down Mm. is with martian manhunter we see a journey that deals with overcoming grief and understanding not just understanding grief but understanding a new world. And with this new world that he, you know, comes to, he has to learn so many different lessons because it is completely different. So people think he is acting in an odd way. And because he's in a new world, he thinks that, or this is what we think he thinks, um, he thinks that people are acting odd. And you know, he's got to kind of come to this, you know, mid ground and, you know, really get to know these people, you know, people that might not want to get to know him as well. But in the end, I feel that Martian Manhunter really did get to know Earth and appreciate it. Mm-hmm. And that forgiveness thing, let's talk about that for a moment. When you have something as terrible as what John Jones went through, you have to, you have to grieve it out, man. You have to do, you have to grieve it out in some way. And you think of the world and well, his world and every world that he comes in, he would probably think it's, they're awful places, evil people and everything like that. And 
you could be scared or you could feel lonely or or just feel angry and I'm sure this character felt all of that but I believe this character ended up forgiving in a way the people that destroyed his family and his world because he realizes that he has to he cannot continue to carry that with him and that is a big lesson for a Cartoon Network show Yes. So one of the things I want to touch on is something you, you mentioned a few times. That was about. long-winded for me. <laughs> <laughs> you talked about how he knows how people feel. Now, obviously, he's psychic, but he doesn't yeah. pry into people's minds. Exactly. But he is um, able to just pick up emotions from people. And he is very calm and very neutral in the way that he speaks to people mm -hmm. at most times. Most times, yes. And when, uh, when he's released from containment in Secret Origins by Superman, Superman, who himself is an alien, doesn't bat an eyelid at his appearance no of course not batman is a bit more standoffish he's not certain about mm -hmm. him and the first thing that uh, jean does is he adopts what he thinks is a more comfortable uh, appearance mm -hmm. so he looks like a superhero basically and extends his hand for a handshake yeah batman is still a little bit like i don't know what's going on here yeah but um i think that martian manhunter is very restrained um, he is very well aware of how people feel, mm -hmm. whether he wants to or not. Yep. And I think when he's faced with hostility from people, particularly you know the people that locked him up in the first instance, he completely understands why they did that because he experiences their feelings of mm -hmm. confusion and fear. And he's like, oh, well, yeah, of course they're going to be confused and afraid. Um, because I've turned up. I look nothing like them. Of course they're going to be upset. Yeah, It's okay that what they've done. I don't hold anything against them. He would never do the same thing himself. No. But he at least understands them. He's probably the most understanding, possibly tied with Superman as the most understanding character in Justice League. Like, like you said, you could find that middle ground of <clears throat> what they, you know, what... You know, Martian Manhunter thinks, mm -hmm. and then what everyone else thinks, and then come to that, you know, that mid-ground there. Yes. Yeah, I agree. Yeah. There there were a couple of episodes where he had some very powerful scenes. Oh, so, yeah. um, oh my God, I'm drawing a blank on the episode name now, but it's while he's... I, I want to say it was... Was it Comfort and Joy, or was it Tabula Rasa? Where he goes out in the woods, because he's been overwhelmed by... I think it was Tabula Rasa, the one with... Um, What's his name? Amazo. Mm -hmm. I think. Someone's going to correct me. Big Mikey P, get your correction pen ready. Um, but it, he's he's looking for the android, but he can't help overhearing other people's thoughts. Or sorry, he was looking for Luther. That's right, Lex Luther. But he couldn't help overhearing other people's thoughts, and a lot of them were very negative, and it got to him. So he fled to the woods to just kind of regroup himself. At that point was probably one of his lowest points, because he was very feeling very negative about humanity but out in the woods there was a large group of people searching for a missing child and their selflessness and him hearing their private thoughts that i think there was one guy that was like oh god i really don't want to be out here but if it was my girl i'd want you know as many people as possible yeah. looking for her that and he finds the little girl and returns her to her family but that's what he needed to fill him with um, enthusiasm and just restore him to his old self. And that was a really powerful scene. There's one episode... Sorry, did you want to say anything about that? Oh, no, I no, on? I was just letting you... There's one episode, though, that I... Maybe a bit controversial, but I don't like their depiction of the Martian Manhunter. And that's in A Night of Shadows, the, the one with Morgan Le Fay and Etrigan the Demon, mm -hmm. where... Morgan Le Fay essentially, I'm going to say she seduces him, but not with like sexual acts, but with a promise of seeing his family yeah. again. And he falls for it, even though he knows it's not real. And I suppose you can argue that, yes, that just shows the the depth of his feeling and how he's willing to live a lie, even though, you know, just to have a, a small taste of small being with his family taste. again because he misses them so much. And, yeah, I get that. But I feel like Jean is way too smart for that. He would not fall for it. He'd go, it's a lie. I don't believe it. And in a way, I'm kind of defeating my own argument here. 
he proves himself to be a better hero by overcoming yeah. those feelings. He conquers them and he he passes them off, you know, and he, he, he becomes better for it. Mm-hmm. Um, I, I will say, though, that I do enjoy all those scenes of, like, Etrigan popping into his head going, You fool! <laughs> and, like, slapping him about. You just like Etrigan. <laughs> I do like Etrigan the demon, yes. Yeah. It's a shame he didn't rhyme in the show, but um, I love the performance. I, I can't remember the name of the actor who played him. I remember it was Billy Zane in Batman, um, excuse me, the new Batman Adventures, but uh, in Justice League it was a different actor. Billy's in yeah. of Titanic. Yes, of Titanic oh. and um, the Ghost Who Walks. You know the Phantom, the purple um, leotard guy. Oh, he's he's in a load of other stuff as well, but show. I can't remember anything. He's doing a biopic of Marlon Brando. Yeah, that's, uh, and seems with fitting. with the right wig, he looks just like him, and it yeah. really freaked me out. But anyway, that's an aside. Do you yeah. want to say something else about Martian Manhunter? <laughs> Sorry, I've talked a load. <laughs> that's okay. I had a very long-winded, maybe not so. Uh, articulate beginning so yeah um i one of the reasons that Martian manhunter is one of my fa- all-time favorite characters is because it is not just one of those people people one of those characters that's just a one pager if you know what i mean like you with martian manhunter you cannot put everything about him on just one page you can't do it Um, And the reason why is because there's depth, there's substance, there's, there's meaning to the character. And I love that. And I love the fact that they, they talked about the, the trauma that, that he went through because it's a trauma that so many people in the real world go through. And I've, I've mentioned similar things to this before, but just imagine a kid seeing that and saying, oh, wow, it's not just, you know, it's not just me that goes through those things. There are other people. How Maybe I can get some understanding. Maybe I could, you know, you know, not feel alone. Yeah, I completely agree. Yeah. And obviously, as an alien that doesn't look like other um you know the the people that live on the planet, he like is. Superman does, yeah, and Hawkgirl does to a certain extent. Mm-hmm. He is the the ultimate outsider in the show. Yeah, and actually, it's kind of fitting that he can change his appearance to fit in, but he shouldn't really have to. Yeah, I, you know, there's so much depth to this character. There's the you know having to conform to the norms of of our society i mean so many groups in this world can um can talk about that yeah um you know the the family trauma the people misunderstand him so so many of us as in like the people listening to this the people who are in our little community can understand at least one thing that that character went through at least, yeah. yeah. I know um, Matty from Watchtower Database, uh, they interpret Martian Manhunter as being a non-binary character. And I, it makes I, I perfectly agree. perfect sense to me. Yeah, I totally agree. Uh, Jean is perfectly happy wandering around as male and female, changing race. Um, mm-hmm. Like in Justice League Unlimited, uh, when Jean quits the Justice League. Um, I suppose I should say they for Jean, shouldn't I? Mm. Well, I'm going to start saying they for John. They decide to live their life as a, an elderly uh, Chinese male. Yeah. yeah. Oh, can we talk about that moment? Oh, yeah. Can we please talk about that moment? We have so much throughout all of the shows that he's on, throughout all of the episodes that he is in, he is struggling in some sort of way. Just like, you know, even if it's just for lack of a better term, human struggle, we see him take you know this break or whatever this yeah Yeah, and he he goes to find himself and he finds a life with another person but then it's as if he's turning into because he's this um chinese man this older chinese man and he turns into this dragon and if you know anything about the um the the background of dragons and like the the meaning of, yeah, in of Chinese a dragon. culture as it well. is just amazing that this 
character becomes a dragon, a symbol that is so important and so strong. And I'm not just saying that because I'm also a dragon, 88 Club. But <laughs> I just, I loved that so much. And it just felt so right. Yeah. Yeah, and I actually thought it was like Jean's arc through Justice League Unlimited where he had isolated himself on the Watchtower for, I think it was like two years or something like that. He had spent years up on the Watchtower not going back down to Earth and just focusing on being a Justice Leaguer and managing the, the their expansion from space. Um, and the way that he was just disconnected from society mm -hmm. and crestfallen in a way he was very clearly troubled um I, I thought that was a very good story arc and i remember at the time when the show came out and he he left and wasn't in it for most of the season i remember thinking like why did they do that why did you get rid of martian manhunter it doesn't make any sense but that one scene yeah that one scene at the oh. end where you know he, you see this uh, elderly man turn into a dragon you think who the hell is this guy you can see the other mm -hmm. Justice League is thinking that as well. And then he uh, adopts his true form. They go, oh, Jean, hello. <laughs> I remember the first time that I saw that, I literally gasped. And I started to go like my girly, like, eee! type thing. Because I do that sometimes. I don't like that's like like a meme or something that people, but I've, I've always done that. And then I started to clap. And then I just felt this rush of emotion of like, damn, Yes. Yeah. <laughs> yes, and the the best thing as well is so at the the very end of the last episode, as they're all, um, you know, the villains have worked together with the heroes, mm -hmm. and they ask, "Come on, there's got to be some leniency." And Batman says, "You got two minutes mm -hmm. before he chases after them." They're like, yeah. "What? <laughs> <laughs> One minute fifty eight or whatever it yeah. was." I think it was Wonder Woman that said that actually. Yeah. Um, and they all run off, and then the Justice League is all like laugh, and they start strolling out. Martian Manhunter gets his mobile out, calls his wife up, and says, "I think I'll be home for dinner." <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's just a character that really—you don't obviously see the start of, of 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 Martian Manhunter in terms of like his you know beginnings, but you do see the beginning of martian manhunter you don't see john jones mm -hmm. you see martian manhunter and yeah. that is it it was such an important thing in my life especially at the time that i watched this because i had when i when i first started watching this i hadn't lost anybody but then when i saw justice league unlimited i had and i just felt a little bit less sad for you know however long the the episode was the the last episode because of that moment and i i couldn't believe it because it was such a hard time as anyone who's ever lost anyone in in, in their life knows that even if it's just for you know three minutes or half an hour your life gets better in that time, whether it's because of a song, a TV show, a movie, whatever, it feels nice. And it felt nice to watch that. And being like a 21 year old person that had never lost anyone in her life. And then that happened and I didn't really, I moved uh, countries and I think it was the middle of the night that I watched this. Mm -hmm. And I needed that little bit of relief and I got it and it will always and forever mean the world to me. Even if I didn't have that moment of relief, I think Martian Manhunter would still be one of my all time favorites. Yeah. Yeah. I really like him and Carl Lumley's uh, an excellent uh, voice actor. Oh yeah. Give it up to Carl. Yeah. He's great. He's played a number of roles in DCAU. He was mm. stalker in Batman beyond. Mm -hmm. He was the mayor in the Superman episode with the flash. Mm -hmm. um, I feel like he was also a cop in Superman, but I might be misremembering. I feel like he was the cop in, in the parasite episode feeding time, but that was, it might've been somebody else. I'll have to refresh my memory. But yeah. Um, but yeah, Carl, yeah, Carl Lumley's great, and um, I'm going to name drop Watchtower Database again. 
They did a, an interview so with what? him. They did an interview with him on their channel. Uh, you should go watch that, where he talked about his background as a theatre actor. Oh, you um, can definitely he was, he was a journalist tell. as well at one point. Um, very talented man. He's like um, Ian McKellen. When he does a role, you can you can feel and you can hear that theatre background. Mm. And it's certain words as well. Um, but yeah, oh my gosh, that's amazing. I think he played Anansi in Static Shock as well, who was like the African superhero. I think he did. It's been a while since I've watched Static Shock. I actually got all the DVDs recently, but I've not got around to watching them because my life is consumed by day job and, and this. So I, <laughs> I know we haven't spoken a lot about Martian Manhunter. We've spent like 20 minutes. But I, you know, I sprinkle them here and there when, when I when I talk about Justice League. And... Uh, this isn't going to be like a you know hour and a half episode because I think that we should always talk about Martian Manhunter and remember, mm. obviously, the best. Mm. I'll tell you one thing that I find curious. In one of the early episodes of uh, Justice League, I believe it was an early episode, I'm starting to doubt myself now because it's very warm here and my brain's kind of cooking, um, Martian Manhunter showed a power where he could turn his body into like a... Like, hard steel or diamond or something someone went to punch him and he just turned really solid and they hit him and it really hurt them he never did it again and there was one episode where he had like glowing powers as well i feel like his powers were just kind of maybe he nebulous. was just trying to or excuse me maybe they were just trying to figure it out yeah maybe maybe i think in the comics he's obviously got flight shape shifting he can become intangible um he didn't have heat vision because martians don't like fire um, I don't like fire. But then again, I've not read every single Martian Manhunter comic. I just, yeah. Did I mention that he was psychic? I must have done. That's like obviously. Yeah. That's like the first thing you think you of have, of Martian yeah. Manhunter, surely. Yeah. He's one of those psychics, kind of like Charles Xavier. Oh my God, Marvel! Yeah. Oh no, this <laughs> is a plug plug for Flipside. Yeah, that doesn't <laughs> intrude unless necessary. Yes, yes, that's right. Although I feel like there was an episode where... Okay, he... so let's get to the... <laughs> <laughs> no, there was an episode where he... he I can't remember it now. Oh, my... I'm sorry. I'm going to blame this heat and the fact that I've been awake since 3 a.m. Or where? half three, I think it was. Um, but he did use his powers on a villain like quite forcefully <laughs> yes it was the one of the the hawk people i've forgotten his name um the character but it was the like the, yeah the thanagarian the kind of skinnier one um who's voiced by hector elizondo oh, I love um he's like he's like uh, my tech uh, you can't read my mind stupid martian he goes we'll see about that and then <laughs> it like turned him into a vegetable by breaking through his psychic defenses to read his mind mm -hmm. uh that was a very intense moment um <laughs> just thinking about that that's that three-part story star-crossed um I, I think of the scene when they've all escaped and they're in that department store and they've got to change out of their costumes get into civilian clothes so that you know, they can escape from the Thanagarians. And the Flash doesn't want to do it because he's like, oh, you, you'll know my secret identity. And Batman points at him and goes, Wally West points at Superman. Clark Kent points at, um, I think it was... Diana? Diana. No. No, it wasn't Diana. No, because they, they, she didn't no. really have a secret identity. And he points at himself and goes, Bruce Wayne, and takes his mask yeah. off. Doesn't point at John. It's because everybody knows John Johns. Yeah. Everyone knows he's John Johns. Yeah, everybody knows he's John <laughs> Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. Shall we get to the comments now? Because I'm looking forward to reading some of the comments and replying to some of them. So, first comment is big, one. Big Mikey P. I yeah, said it before you. You did. spoiled it. I was going to give him a big <laughs> intro. Now it's not happening. Sorry, blame Mary. <laughs> uh, okay, so his comment is. <clears throat> Timely, this one just finished episode two out of 13 of the Lord of the Rings 1981 radio drama sometime after. Surprisingly good so far, and it makes me grin seeing certain text from the book being narrated verbatim. Wonder Woman. The first thing that comes to mind is her memorably kicking lots of random goons' butts, especially the ones seen in The Savage, uh, the Savage Time and Hawk and Dove. Hard to admit, but I've never actually grew up on a Linda Carter TV show. Neither did I. I wasn't Neither even born I. then. 
Not because it was quite terrible, but even then it may have been because it doesn't have the easily notable heroin empowerment spark as live action works like Buffy the Vampire Slayer and Babylon 5. Not that into Xena Warrior Princess, though, if anyone asks. <gasps> Anime like Revolution Shut Girl, Utena, just watch out because there'll be abstract plot details. As three alien shadow puppet girls would commonly say, <sighs> Kashira, Kashira. <laughs> Go, goes on G Kashira you're doing this to annoy me now I'm certain of it go guy go guy go guy Aria I know there's no action but I don't care empowerment can also mean doing loud and proud simple work like Martian water canal gondola services okay um, panty and stocking look them look them being crass and sexually active is worth a lot of complaints but honestly they unflinchingly embraced their femininity joyously while surprisingly not being all too badly exploited in response. Oh, here we go. Puella, Magi, Madoka, Magica. Tortured they may be, <laughs> the magical girls there. But there's something about it that easily makes it deserve the pundits, even if they're all justifiable criticisms, particularly to stuff like the Rebellion movie. And Pat Labor, yes, the, the latter counts, of course, girls like... Noah Izumi are gems. Western animation like Kim Possible and the original Powerpuff Girls and video games like Perfect Dark. Polished PC port when? Probably never. No One Lives Forever 1 and 2. Legal releases when? Probably never. <laughs> Shantae and Bloodstained Ritual of the Night. Okay, we're not laughing at the, these names, okay? We're laughing at how Luke pronounces the name. It was a flawless pronunciation. <laughs> Everyone will know exactly what I'm talking about, even if I don't. <laughs> oh, I don't mind non-DCAU examples, Mary. There'll come a time when Luke uh, will expand to Teen Titans and the Batman and X-Men and Spider-Man. Don't hold your breath. Hey, he said smears, okay? He, he also said me, too. I know. He said smears. You said Mary. You call me by my name, <laughs> Luke. My name is Smears. <laughs> Darn shame how Wonder Woman 1984 went, though. I was expecting a Dark Knight Captain America Winter Soldier level better, yet really dark and gritty. Sequel to the already good Wonder Woman 2017, which does fit as a fine standalone in my eyes, if if one is not big into the DCEU. Not whatever Kingsman, The Golden Circle, X-Men, The Last Stand, Terminator, Dark Fate level, unevenness Wonder Woman 84 became. At 11.18, we don't do killing to our enemies. I'm trying to speak for Superman. Rewatch that scene. It was really the Flash. Isn't that what I said? Did I say it was the Flash? I thought I did. Anyway. I don't remember. I'm glad you, you chimed in to uh, answer our question. The Flash is obviously my favourite, so... Mm -hmm. Well, one of my favourites. At least the DCAU Wonder Woman isn't annoyingly aggressive, unlike iterations like the one from Kingdom Come, however great those comics slash novelizations are. Meantime, the aggressiveness was transferred quite well to Hawk Girl Shira. Say what anyone will of Aresia and the Justice League Season 1 two-part of Fury, at least her implied Balkan Wars backstory set in the 80s, maybe not the 90s, akin to the real-life thought, though. Bosnia and Kosovo are surprisingly still fresh in the mind three decades on, and oh boy, if only Ukraine was openly assisted by NATO and the UN in the same way since 2014. Seemed more well executed than Magneto's maybe or maybe not the Holocaust backstory from X-Men the Animated Series. I think X-Men 97 clarified that it absolutely was the Holocaust. Mm -hmm. um, I've lost my train of thought there. Uh, let's just continue with the comment. 22 minutes 40, poor Bruce. The gargoyle, I mean, wait, wrong gargoyle. I was referring to Spider-Man the Animated Series gargoyle pal. Dakota Fanning really did well as Wonder Woman in kid stuff. Granted, she already proved her voice acting chops in My Neighbor Totoro. Satsuki Kasakabe and the titular Coraline. Hey, Dakota Fanning is amazing. I uh, have recently just started watching some um, older Denzel Washington movies, and one of my favorites of his is Man on Fire, maybe because I just think it's badass. Um, and I love the ending, but it reminds me of how amazing Dakota Fanning is because she was not very old when she did that movie and it was still amazing. The Brave and the Bold Buana Beast, greater than DCAU Buana Beast though, same with Red Tornado who also appeared in This Little Piggy. Apparently the amphitheater in This Little Piggy is one popular gay club, lots of men there, particularly during the serenade. 
Well, I think you also find a lot of men at strip clubs, but you wouldn't call those uh, uh, gay bars, would you? I mean, if there was a gay bar called This Little Piggy, you know what? I don't, <laughs> I don't go to clubs or, or bars or anything, but I would go to that one. Uh, 28 minutes and 29 seconds. Oh, it's funny then. With Conroy's passing, however, it's now heartwarmingly sad. What? No mention for for the man who has everything much. Gotta love the JLU take on it for making Wonder Woman more prominent than the comic counterpart, particularly since Robin, Jason Todd in the comics, the one who threw the Black Mercy back to Mongol, is understandably adapted out. Drowned out. Go to hell, indeed. Fight on screen and the dinosaurs. I love the yeah. dinosaurs. I actually forgot to mention uh, that Susan Blue is openly a lesbian too. Uh, 34 minutes 49, Batgirl Adventures one shot. Did I not say Batgirl? That's what I was thinking. 38 minutes and 30, and then comes Frodo x Sam Wise. I mean, that stuff is pretty uh, open, isn't it, in the uh, in the book as well, I, I gather. I, I was talking to someone about this recently, and they said in the book it was even more... Um, What's the word I'm looking for? Not homoerotic, but um, I can't think of the word. You'll know, you know what I mean. Have like I a... mentioned that I love Lord of the Rings? Yes, you have. Okay. Yes, that's why we're bringing it up. I'm okay. sure. Anyway, 39 minutes and 42 seconds. I take the joke in stride. However, I do have legit worries. Who knows if 97 ends up jumping the shark in a manner so unfixable it becomes like Voltron Legendary Defenders final episode, and the Mandalorian season three all over again. And there is a possible. If min- minute chance, it may somehow get canned out of the spectacular Spider-Man. I don't remember Altieri having done work for a Scooby-Doo series. He showed me some of his uh, drawings for Scooby-Doo, and it featured um, what's the the redhead girl Daphne? Is it Daphne or Velma? No, Velma's no, the Velma's, Velma's the one with the glasses. Daphne putting her feet up on the dashboard and painting her toenails, and he said, "What does this remind you of?" Quentin Tarantino. No, I went. Harley's Holiday. Veronica Vreeland does something similar. He went, well done. <laughs> <laughs> I just think Quinn Tarantino would feet. Every time yeah. we do feet, I'm like, Quinn Tarantino, stop it. Yeah. Um. Anyway, I really don't think Fire and Ice are a secret couple in the DCAU. Well, you know, Hawk Girl makes reference to it because she's heard that she's Brazilian. Ooh, Brazilian. Uh, so... Closing out the comments, so 47 minutes and 17 seconds. I'm not alone in the pain, Justice League, Justice, Justice League for Tara and Willow. Just Justice, no League here. In hindsight, Static Shock Richie getting pundits for being gay seems a bit overblown. Never have I seen him be notably queer at the show and that the detail was just informed via word of God from good old Dwayne McDuffie. You could also argue the fact that he showed no interest in any women ever but was always very loyal and... Um, what's the word I'm looking for? I'm really forgetting words today, aren't I? But he was very, he was very much uh, there for the the male uh, characters in the show. Not saying that he was being lecherous or anything like that, of course. But uh, you know, the hints are there, I guess, if you know where to look for them. We love hints. <laughs> I really hope you guys might want to skip on the hate comments on this podcast and flip side, particularly if they get spammed a lot. Saves time too. I'm not saying anything about saving time. <laughs> <laughs> Did he say that? Yeah. <laughs> what did he say that? Oh, I see. <laughs> no, we don't. Um, we've made a decision on um, the hate comments, and that's not to even give them any of our time. No, it's, I mean, you can provide um, feedback and your opinions. So long as you're not being hateful, it's fine. Uh, the actual hate comments. That's what I'm talking yeah, about. Yeah, no, the actual hate comments did not get read out, and no. those people have all been muted into oblivion. No, see, the thing is, criticize, um, critiquing and feedback is something that I think, as humans, we need to do, um, or we, we need to, to hear. But there's a difference between hating something and critiquing it in a um, nice way. Hmm. Uh, so final final remarks from Big Mikey P Uh, not sure if she's a Wonder Woman villain but I would love to see the Queen of Fables get a DC adaptational treatment she is in the Harley Quinn show Uh, Wanda Sykes does her voice I think is that her name? I love Wanda Sykes yeah I think it's Wanda Sykes correct me if I'm wrong anyone that knows better 
Uh, and finally, called it with John. Hope this may also include his appearances in his alternate universe counterparts in the Justice League Infinity Comics too. Sadly, we didn't discuss any of the tie-in comics. But fortunately, that gives you plenty to talk about in the comment on this episode. Yeah, because, Mikey P, I haven't read those comics, but I have heard about them. Yeah, well, they're in this room. Mm-hmm. But yeah, tell me, you tell me a little bit about them because it saves me from having to lift, like, I, I don't know where the comics are in this room. And if you've ever seen anything that resembles a storage unit, that's kind of what Luke's office looks like. Yeah, it does. But I've got way too much. Comics. And then I bought a load more. I know. I've got a problem. Anyway, <laughs> thank you for your comment, Big Mikey P. Thank you so much, My- Big Mikey P. Let's move on to the next commenter, who's a new commenter. Thank you for commenting for the first time. Um, welcome. Welcome. Their username is Figgy. And you have with double F, double G, double Y. So you have to really emphasize Figgy. the F, G, Y. Yeah. Crazy. She doesn't have her own animated show yet. I know, right? Yeah, I know. Absolutely baffling. <gasps> oh, my God. Who do you think would voice her? Well, you know, I'd love Susan Eisenberg to do it, mm-hmm. but uh, it's probably time for fresh blood in, in this area. Um, Excuse me, you better watch your mouth about Miss Eisenberg. Oh, no, no, no. It's nothing against Susan Eisenberg. Right. I think she's wonderful. Yeah, she is lovely. I don't know. Tara Strong could do it. No. No, <laughs> no I think she, I think Tara Strong could do anything, if I'm, if I'm being completely honest. No, I don't know who would do it. Um, who do you guys think? Because I don't know why. I just, around the, you know, Kaylee Kyoko. How, how do you say? I can't. Kyoko? 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 I don't know. I can't pronounce anything. I don't know. But um, around that sort of genre, there are so many um, TV actresses that are really great at voice acting. So Kaylee, should, you, she should produce it. And she should be like, hey, I got a friend that could do Wonder Woman. Nope, do do Wonder Woman's voice. Yeah, boom, boom. <laughs> That's fine. Moving on. Next comment, another new commenter. Welcome. Hello. Dazzle the Star says, Wonder Woman has always been one of my favorite characters in Justice League ever since I watched the first episode. Mary, I think you feel similarly. Yeah. Well, I mean, I've, I've, I've loved Wonder Woman even before then. But with this one, instead of Wonder Woman just being like, I don't know, like, all-American. It's kind of like Superman. All-American hero. Mm -hmm. But she's Greek. Yeah, that's the thing. (laughs) She was badass. All-earthly hero. Well, in a way, that kind of sums up, like, modern Americanism, though, doesn't it? Because, Mm -hmm. you know, it's Europeans uh, colonizing the place. Yeah. But, yeah, anyway. That aside, let's move on to the next comment. So, Matthew K122 says, hope we get DCAU Wonder Woman animated series someday. I think the ship has well and truly sailed on that opportunity, sadly. Um, Warner Brothers, uh, just, it's me again. If you need somebody to do a voice acting role for Wonder Woman, I don't have the best voice in the world, <laughs> but I'm available and I'm cheap. <laughs> so, Your rates are reasonable. <laughs> my rates are very reasonable. Almost insultingly reasonable <laughs> all right next comment is from time lord victorious thanks for coming back hello time lord says that's crazy she does not have her own animated show especially when the gal Gadot film made her popular again yeah yeah missed opportunity there absolutely is there gonna be another um gal Gadot one no oh because they they're changing it all up now aren't they yes so that sucks, but, you know, hopefully there's going to be another Wonder Woman movie. There will be eventually, I'm certain of it. Yeah. Uh, Lowell Lucas Jr. left a bunch of comments. Uh, I, we do generally have a policy of only reading one of them, though, but I think because some of them are very short, they, they'll fit in one. We're going to read them. So uh, he says, honestly, I love Wonder Woman. F- funny enough, she's an Amazon I could root for. There aren't many that have their own name identity revealed. I don't think of her as a weak woman, never, but a strong independent and someone who struggles with their own flaws but tries to make things right. Word. Ever read Harley Quinn's Little Black Book with Wonder Woman by Amanda Connor? 
I think you'll find some funny and hilarious interactions with the two. I haven't actually read that one. The only Harley's uh, Little Black Book I have read is the one with Lobo. Where have I heard that Amanda Connor? She draws the Barbie covers. I knew that. Yeah. I knew that. And Jeff, whoever Jeff yeah, is. Whoever, well, I could just Google who Jeff yeah, was. But, I know. Yeah. Um, as Mary's mentioned in lots of stuff across her channel, she's been tracking down uh, old Marvel Barbie comics. And Amanda Connor drew the covers for most of the issues of Barbie. Very, very well. Yeah. Uh, right. So let's move on to the next comment. Um, do, 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 do. So Screenwiper says, we all have a little Wonder Woman in us. And some of us are lucky enough to find ourselves. Oh, no, I'm not reading the rest of that. That's rude. Wait, wait. <laughs> What? The scientific consensus nowadays is that animals do have thoughts and feelings. That's definitely the case, and the amount of animal species with documented proven sentience is always grow growing. Uh, chicken update. Unfortunately, there is a uh, an unpleasant chicken update. Yeah. Uh, so Pebbles' death, thanks everyone who expressed condolences, may have left a lasting impact on Wilma, taught her that even though they're safe under my protection, they aren't invincible and need to treat each other with care. Or maybe she just doesn't want to get bollocked. <laughs> Either way, she isn't pulling feathers out of the others and is behaving herself. She's also stepping up and provided with the eggs. Betty has a little molt, a common side effect of the hormone she's on. Other than the hens were dipped in the chemical bath not a joke origin story it's to prevent them getting mites maybe that's what uh, jack napier said as well it's to stop the mites i'm um i'm aware of the the chemical bath wilma has been eating the feathers that fell off her possibly also contributing to wilma plucking less but betty has had has new feathers starting to come through even on that bald patch on her back that wilma kept pecking and worsening before she'll be as fluffy as the others again one day speaking of fluffy blue is seems to be feeling well though age is catching up with her and i expect this to be her final summer she cannot poop with as much projectile force <laughs> as she used to and gets tiny bits of mud stuck in her backside feathers sometimes and i have to clean it out nearly every day blue hates this but it usually calms down and shuts up when she realizes i'm not going to pluck her i'm helping her and then it's over sooner if she stays still a common early symptom of cancer is when they cannot shoot their poop out at all and it just dribbles out of them going into their feathers. That's not what seems to be happening. This is far less messy. I can't say for sure whether Blue has cancer, but it's possible that she does. But other than the poop, she seems fine. She can run and jump and stand for herself brilliantly when she wants, so maybe I'm yet again worrying about nothing. But there will certainly be a day when it isn't nothing. Still got three happy hens in the meantime, all behaving pretty well, and for that I'm grateful. Also, the mites that had beaten uh, had been beaten back enough for Wilma and Betty to stop complaining and protesting about them. They were refusing to go to bed at night. I'd need to clean the coop again and show them how clean it was to pass their inspection. Now it's passing inspection at night without a big drama first. I'm mending a bike in the garage while listening, and Wilma and Betty walked in to hear Mary call them heroes. <laughs> uh, there has, however, been a, a sad update that the vet and I were suspecting arthritis but found a big mass in her guts. So this is uh, Blue he's talking about. Yeah. I forked out for an x-ray and the results were bad. Seems that our old nemesis ovarian cancer again. I'm so sorry. I know Mary's going to be saddened by this news. I'm devastated. Blue is yet again showing how absolutely badass she is and still looks and acts very well. I will do all I can to keep it that way. Keep her enjoying life for as long and as best as I can. And since this comment, uh, Blue has been put down. Yeah. It's for the best. Yeah, so condolences, Scream Wiper. Um, as we said to you yeah. privately, you know, you gave the, that animal a, a very nice, happy life towards yeah. the end. It might not have started great, but it ended very well. So, and I'm going to say something now, mm -hmm. and I say it a lot in my in my personal life, is I do not, I adopt, I don't shop. Um, and people that breed animals to the point that it's it's they, they they mutilate the animals and everything it is terrible and then we have a, an industry filled with people that are they have chickens just in 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 cages all day every day and they just they're just alive to to put out eggs and that's it they don't get to see sunlight they don't they don't get to you know, do anything. 
and it's not just chickens. It's, it's so many different animals. We need to stop this. And yes, we could buy cage free and you know, all of this, but sometimes companies lie and that sucks, but we all need to stand up and stop the mistreatment of, of animals. And we need to be part of the solution by not buying from breeders that are horrible to animals. And we need to save these critters from terrible, terrible lives. And I know it might sound annoying and preachy, but these critters give us so much joy and hope and love. The least that we could do is make sure they have a great life. So yeah, that's my preachy bit. Is your chickens have given me so much happiness. Screen wiper. I, I am so sorry. And I, I've been thinking about you a lot as Luke probably knows, because occasionally I will just be like, Oh, blue. <laughs> it's, and so something like that. Like, I want you to know we are thinking of you and we love you for taking care of those chuck chucks and being our friend. And just to close out, Screenwiper left a separate comment saying a quote from Homer Simpson. <laughs> well, Scooby-Doo can do-do, but Linda Carter is smarter. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> I don't understand, but you know what? It's relevant to the conversation. Yeah. <laughs> uh, okay, so another first commenter, I believe. Uh, it's the great Acolyte. Acolyte? Acolyte, I think. Acolyte. Yeah. Who says, best Wonder Woman. Obviously. Yeah. I completely Agreed. agree. There's not a huge amount of competition. There's Linda Carter. There's uh, the Super Friends Wonder Woman. There's Barbie. There's, there's the uh, the Barbie Wonder Woman, yes, and um, <laughs> Gal Gadot. Yeah. But, you know. Susan Eisenberg will always and forever be my Wonder Woman. I love Linda Carter, but I love Susan more. Mm. So David Carney returns. Hello, David. Hi, David. Says, hi, Luke and Mary. Hope you both had a good week. Yeah. <laughs> no comment. Started reading Wonder Woman when David and Meredith Finch were on the book. Not sure whether to read Tom King's run. Uh, I would say do read it because I'm enjoying it. Uh, Susan Eisenberg is the voice I hear when reading the comics. Enjoyed the first Wonder Woman film. Wasn't a fan of Wonder Woman 1984. Happy anniversary for Totally Shroy Podcast on the 16th of July. Oh, somebody yes. noticed. Somebody noticed before I noticed. Yeah. <laughs> we were so busy. <laughs> yeah. I don't know what the date is half the time. So, you know, I, I should have uh, done something to commemorate it. But whoops. Maybe next time. Maybe. 16th of July, 2025. Here we come. Hey. <laughs> Uh, next we have A1ML33Y, uh, Julia Raul. Uh, don't believe he's corrected me on the pronunciation, so I'm going to start saying Julia, but if it's Julia, I apologize. Uh, says, I love Wonder Woman mostly because of the Linda Carter TV series I watched as a kid in the 90s on Sci-Fi Channel. But after seeing her in Justice League Unlimited, I seriously wish she'd had her own animated series. Like, right now, I'm a little frustrated that Batman and Superman get 20 animated series and movies. Yeah. <laughs> but Wonder Woman only gets two animated movies and two live-action movies set in the terrible DCEU, played by the war criminal Gal Gadot, oh, no! who can't oh, no! act. Well, <laughs> alleged, <laughs> I think. But I have a question for Luke and Mary. Why in 2024 does Walmart Woman... Oh, I assume, assume you mean Wonder Woman. It's probably an autocorrect thing. Not have an animated series, but Batman Cape Crusader gets all the hype and my adventures of Superman. But Wonder Woman has nothing. I think it's because Warner Brothers marketers have got data that suggests that uh, potential viewers aren't that interested in a Wonder Woman show, but they will tune into a Batman one and maybe a Superman one. Superman actually hasn't had that many shows. He had Superman the Animated Series and he was in Justice League. Um, Batman has had an absolute metric crap ton of them, although not a new one in the last 10 years. I know it's hard to believe, but that um, Beware the Batman came out 10 years ago. It, I was shocked when I realised that. Um, but yeah, Wonder Woman gets nothing at all. I, I think they perhaps just assume that little boys aren't interested in watching a show about Wonder Woman, which... Considering the, the, the viewer's age, like the average viewer's age for these shows these days, I think it's not so much little boys, but uh, 
Little boys in big bodies. Let's put yeah. it that way. <laughs> um, yeah. I'd watch it. I'd watch a Wonder Woman show. I mean, I, I think Warner Brothers needs to just say, after they give me a job, obviously, um, they need to just say, hey, let's try this. Let's have some some characters that aren't just Harley Quinn and Batman. Let's have some of those characters like Wonder Woman. Like, oh my God, could you imagine a Huntress and Question mm. show? Yeah, that would be nice. A love story you always wanted. Uh, so to close off their comment, I also find Wonder Woman supporting cast like Etta Candy, Nubia, Donna Troy, and Steve Trevor, and her villains like Cersei, loved her in Justice League Unlimited, Giganta, Cheetah, MVP of the Legion of Doom, Doctor Poison, the White Magician, and Silver Swan, to name a few. Yeah, yeah, there there are lots of good characters that could be in a Wonder Woman show. I yeah. agree. Uh, next is a new commenter whose Hi. username is Kindness is awesome, and that is true. And their comment is, this channel is awesome. Thank you very much. Oh my much. gosh, thank you. Very nice to say. You're awesome. Uh, next one we have, I have no idea at all. Uh, Same. <laughs> the name rings a bell, but I might just be thinking of myself. Uh, if you're a new commenter, welcome. If you're not new, sorry, I couldn't quite remember what you said before. But anyway, to get to your comment. I like that Wonder Woman in the DCAU had flaws. She had moments of being sexist towards men, even the ones she was friends with, and Hawk Girl would call her out on that. One of her best episodes was Fury Part 1 and 2, where she has to face one of her sisters who became extremely anti-man, and it presents the idea that the Amazons' teachings that men are inherently corrupt and evil could lead one of them to try to rid the world of men. This episode shows that Diana could have been that way had she not been taught to be compassionate and loving, but she has teetered on the edge of viewing the world in a black and white lens so here's the thing i love <laughs> the amazonian way but i don't hate men well, i don't hate all of them so i can see i could see how easily it, it would be to um to be like her like her sister am i her sister Maybe. I don't know. <laughs> uh, next comment, a new person, White Fang of War. Welcome, Hello. White Fang of War. Loved her in Justice League and her movie. Hope she does get a proper animated show of her own someday. I even wrote an outline for it. Cool. You know what? That's two people, Water Brothers, that you could hire. Yeah, at least two. Um, yeah, but just to say, I encourage people to be creative write things just for the joy of writing it not that you know necessarily that anything will ever come of it don't ever be put off by the notion that oh no one's ever going to read this no one's ever going to watch this no one's ever going to listen to this blah 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 just do it for the sake of doing it yeah that's what i did and i'm, I'm doing okay now actually hmm. generally speaking i think with, with in terms of audience yeah um sorry to make that about myself right at the end there i was trying to relate <laughs> but yeah, yeah. anyway <laughs> Uh, next comment, Captain Alice's. Hello, Captain. Enjoys Luke's voice, you say. Could listen for ages, you say. Reading you loud and clear, Mary. <laughs> <clears throat> I did marry you. Yeah, it's true. Call me Ishmael. Some years ago, never mind how long precisely, having a little or no money in my purse, something, something ships, something or other white whale. Actually, I've gotten in over my head. Never mind, let's talk about superheroes instead. <laughs> There seems to be a common sentiment in the comments here that Wonder Woman being denied her own animated series is utterly criminal. She almost had one once, and I'd have killed to have seen it. Batman seems evergreen, and Superman's image is getting rehabilitated lately, so why can't Wonder Woman? I know her history is choppy and disjointed, but so are plenty of other ubiquitous mm -hmm. characters. And look at what an amazing job we got on Justice League regarding Diana's characterization. See, it's not that hard, Warner Brothers. Just give their lady her due. Speaking of Jews, Martian Manhunter feels like one of those characters perpetually on the cusp of becoming popular, even on Justice League. He frequently stayed in the background and would get knocked out so his powers couldn't solve every plot. This is true. Yeah, it is. Poor guy. I know it's hard to juggle seven main characters, but he definitely got some of the worst of it. Jean was even written out of the show at one point, but at least his return was quite triumphant. Maybe the character will get more exposure in the new DC universe. Regardless, I can easily say he's my favourite Martian. Same. There's not much competition. There's the green guys from Mars Attacks. Uh, there's Marvin. Siri, we weren't talking to you. Yeah. <laughs> hey, Siri, show me a list of Martians. Okay, and good. now they won't listen to me. <laughs> no. Typical. Anyway, uh, <laughs> let's move on <clears throat> to the last comment. Okay. 
I know the Snyderverse had its issues, but the way Wonder Woman enters the battle with Doomsday and saves Batman with this epic music is a cool piece of cinematography. It's true. It is very true. Did I say who this comment was from? No, you didn't. I, didn't. It's from I apologize. It's from Belmont, Belmont underscore GR. GR. Yeah. Sorry, Belmont. Um, by way, uh, by the way, in about half of Holmes's timeline, Watson is married to Mary, a woman they met in one of their adventures. Also, I know I'm repeating myself, but I love the Scooby gang, even though Mystery Inc. is not my favorite iteration. Well, as I always say, the world would be a boring place if we all liked exactly the same exactly. things. Exactly. And I, 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 y'all know why I don't like it. You could blame my aunt for that. <laughs> my aunt might be listening. So, hey, Robin, it's your fault. <laughs> <laughs> she's probably like sure is <laughs> with the cigarette hanging out of her mouth like sure is yeah, rewinding the <laughs> scooby-doo vhs yeah <laughs> <laughs> play it for the 10th time of the day yeah. with a, a halloween <laughs> <laughs> the first halloween okay so that is the end of the comments i actually get to pick next you always pick episode you shush do don't Act like like I act like I told you to. <laughs> act like I told you to. Act like I don't know. I'm just kidding. Um, I get to pick next week's episode topic, or not next week, but whenever we come back. Two and weeks. That is going to be our favorite directors, or our favorite director. I haven't decided. I think it's gonna be our favorite director, but. It could be direct horrors. Yes. So it depends on which show we're talking about. All of them. All of them. Well, I'm going to come in with, I think, three. Um, Does one of candidates. them start with a D? Might do. And start with a B. Start with a B? You mean end with a B? Yeah, end with a B. Maybe. And a Kevin Altieri. <laughs> <laughs> right, now you're spoiling it. <laughs> no, it was Bruce Tim. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Thank you guys so much for listening and love ya. And remember, please, please, please give your critters a little kiss tonight and say, hey, I love you. Because guess what? They're so cute and cuddly. Oh my God, I just want to go kiss Gilgamesh. Right, that's a perfect place to end it. Bye. Bye.